Tibet. The very name conjures up images of a high, dry, cold land. The high snow-swept Himalaya, the rooftop of the world. But there is another Tibet, wet and green. This forested Tibet is where a wonder-filled, huge nature preserve was just created through bold action by the government in Lhasa with support from Beijing. A few of us from outside have had the privilege of working with the Tibetan people and government in this task. Tibet is, of course, one of the most difficult to enter parts of the world. Where this new nature preserve was created is one of the most difficult to enter parts of Tibet. Few outsiders have seen the valleys we are about to see. They are some of the most spectacular on the planet. Our team from future generations traveled through the valleys for six years, engaging the local people in the design of the park. Let us explore the valleys together. What we will see will be some of the first views of this region ever shown in the outside world. This hidden area lies in southeastern Tibet, just north of India and Burma. The four rivers that start here in the Tibetan highlands are some of the most important in Asia. The Yangtze, the Mekong, the Salween, and the Brahmaputra or Tsangpo. These four valleys have towering mountains and the gorges below are steep and deep. Nowhere else is the land rumpled on such a scale. This region is still wild and forested and the reason is that the mountains and rumpled landscape protected the valleys. But the mountains can no longer protect the wilderness and so conservation action had to be taken what has been started is one of the largest, most complex conservation challenges in the world. The Tibetan government has protected the region under the Four Great Rivers Ecological Protection Plan. For short, we call this the Four Great Rivers Nature Preserve. It is a huge area, the fourth largest protected area in the world, covering a total region equal to Italy or Washington State. The work is just beginning, but despite the size of the region and the human pressures upon it, conservation is off to a good start. These four great river valleys are among the deepest, steepest, and geologically most unstable in the world. The deepest of them, that of the Brahmaputra or Tsangpo River, as it is called in Tibet, is in fact the deepest valley in the world, four times deeper than the Grand Canyon. The altitude difference between the valley bottom and the mountain tops on either side exceeds 22,000 feet. The rumpled geography in addition to protecting the land from outside development, creates a dazzling concentration of ecosystems. Here, ecosystem diversity ranges from tropical habitat at the bottom of the deepest valleys up through subtropical, temperate, and alpine biomes to arctic-like summits on the high peaks. The ascent from the bottom of the gorge to the top of the peaks is four vertical miles. Traveling this distance covers as many life zones as traveling the 5,000 horizontal miles from the Caribbean to the North Pole. Much of the habitat diversity of Asia is compressed here into these four valleys. In some areas, 80% of the original forest cover still survives. And in these forests, thankfully, still survive over 30% 
of all the flora and fauna species found in mainland Asia. Here in the Four Great Rivers Nature Preserve is Asia's largest, best preserved living museum of what once was the wild Asia that existed before human populations started to grow. The variation in rainfall is as extreme as the topography. In some years, it may be sunny for only a handful of days. Rainfall may exceed 200 inches of annual precipitation. In contrast, just a valley or two away, behind the rain shadow of towering mountains, the climate is true desert. The Four Great Rivers Nature Preserve is a mosaic of ecological complexity and spectacular environments. The celebrated English botanist F. Kingdon Ward was the first outsider to visit much of this area. Two-thirds of a century ago, before the era of documentary films, he described it, taken as a whole, this is one of the botanical treasure houses of the world. Kingdon Ward was trying to find a way to place the scale of mega biodiversity of this region. It is the meeting ground of two biological hotspots, the special term reserved for those 25 spots of the world that have the highest numbers of biological species. Two hot spots join in the Four Great Rivers region, bringing together an estimated 7,000 species of vascular plants, over 400 species of birds, and 150 species of mammals. The flowering plants of the area brought Kingdon Ward. Walking in his footsteps through these jungles and alpine meadows is one of the great joys of my life. Rhododendrons, poppies, gentian, saxifrage, and orchids. The rhododendrons, though, are my favorites. Of the 600 species of wild rhododendrons in the world, one-third are found here. Hiking up a single mountain slope can reveal more than 50 different species. We humans think of rhododendrons as strictly ornamental plants with splendid flowers. But birds and mammals in these Tibetan forests like the nectar that is found in the flowers. Climbing through the rhododendron forests reveals waves of insects and birds feeding in the trees, larger mammals feeding on the fallen blossoms on the ground, or even larger mammals climbing into the trees to feed on the flowers. One special mammal found throughout this region is the Himalayan black bear, Selenarctus tibetanus. This bear lives on the steep forested slopes up to the tree line. It is a smallish bear as the world bears go, but don't underestimate it. Even a fattened male at the end of the summer, one that may weigh 500 pounds, can climb trees with agility. In the trees, the bear builds nests in which to sleep or rest, and occasionally snoozes on the high branches without a nest, somehow managing not to roll off. The bear is omnivorous, eating honey, grubs, buds, fruit, and nuts. When they come into contact with humans, this bear can be fierce, injuring or killing humans. But the killing threat relating to this bear is much more of humans overhunting the animal throughout much of its range. The bear's gallbladder is prized in Asian medicine. The International Fund for Animal Welfare has been active protecting this bear 
which is also known by the romantic name of Moon Bear. Through the 1980s, a crisis was building that threatened all the wild animals of Tibet. Indiscriminate hunting was causing wild animal populations to decline dangerously. Then, in 1994, the Tibetan government, again with partnership from Future Generations and the International Fund for Animal Welfare, put in place a Tibet-wide ban on the commercial sale of wild animal skins, horns, and body parts. This ban, then, was followed by dramatic arrests of poachers and sellers. Now, in the isolated Four Great Rivers area, as well as all over Tibet, a once active trade in wild animals is dramatically reduced. The birds of these valleys are many in number, and also some of the most beautiful and soundful in the world. One fifth of the world's babblers and laughing thrushes are in these forests. The great Tibetan Baybax is a splendid representative of the babbler laughing thrush family. It is found only in Tibet, usually feeding in low bushes and thickets on berries, buds, and grubs. No bird of Tibet, though, symbolizes this high land, as does the black-necked crane. The black-necked crane could be considered the flagship bird of Tibet. In the winter, the cranes move south, heading mostly to the stubble, harvested fields along the Tsangpo Brahmaputra River. In these forests also are splendid pheasants. These wonderful fir forests of the easternmost valley of the Four Rivers area are home to one of the most special monkeys in the world. The black, snub-nosed monkey is closely related to the famous golden monkey of Sichuan, China. This very rare species lives at the highest elevations of any primate except humans, surviving to the tree line at 4,300 meters or 14,000 feet. The black and white snub-nosed monkey has a tight habitat niche because its primary food is the hanging Brioria lichen of these fir forests. The lichen, which looks like what we call Spanish moss, works as a primary food source because it is available all year. But to find enough, the monkey must range over considerable distances. In the spring and summer, the monkeys add to this lichen diet buds, berries, and grubs. However, their home is the fragile, slow-growing, high-altitude firs that are the most highly sought tree for timber. Thus, to protect this extremely rare monkey, this highest living of all primates except ourselves, requires that action protect these high-altitude forests. These high forests are remarkable not only because they stabilize the top slopes and prevent a domino effect of collapsing land, not only because they are home to this unique, highest of all primates, but also these high forests are themselves the highest forests on Earth. Nowhere else do we find trees growing at elevations over 15,000 feet. Saving the forests, though, means saving individual trees. Consider the giant cypress. This very rare tree 
is found in the wild only here in the Four Rivers Nature Preserve, and then only in a specific habitat along the Sangpo Brahmaputra River. Here is a grandfather specimen of this almost extinct species. This grandfather tree is between 2,000 and 2,500 years old, 165 feet high and nearly 20 feet in diameter. Just a few miles from the giant cypress is a giant mulberry tree, a squat tree of phenomenal girth. While only 50 feet tall, this tree lovingly tended inside the walls of a village is nearly 15 feet in diameter and 2,000 years old. For centuries, the deep gorges of these four river valleys protected the region naturally. But beginning in the 1960s, when roads came over the ridges, and through the 1990s, an ecosystem collapse started. These upper drainages of the Yangtze, Mekong, Salween, and Brahmaputra Tsangpo hold one-seventh of China's timber resources. These forests were then pristine with jumbo-sized trees. The area was an obvious source to feed timber into China's rapidly expanding economy. Whole watersheds were logged. Slopes thousands of feet high were cleared. The cascading consequences of such deforestation were huge. Destabilization of the slopes was launched that led to massive topsoil runoff and landslides during the rainy season. In 1998, thousands of people died in China from this flooding and huge sums of investments were lost. The message was clear, stop the clear-cutting upstream. The government of China acted forcefully. Not only was the cutting stopped, but also massive reforestation was started on the exposed slopes. The Four Great Rivers Ecological Protection Plan had been under development for several years, and with the flooding, its thoughtful ecosystem perspective was embraced. The flooding, while terrible, prompted protection. Fortunately, the area is huge in size, so damage could occur even on substantial scale, but there were still scores more of slopes that remained intact. Tibet is not an easy place to live, for plants, or animals, or people. In addition to the lower oxygen and colder weather, here in these four great valleys, the monsoon rains cut off communications and travel for four months each year. In this difficult area, 700,000 people live. The area comprises two whole prefectures of Tibet, Chamdo and Linjie. The challenge of creating a better life is especially hard when there is less oxygen, colder weather, broken roads, and there are so many special biological treasures that must be protected. Fortunately, the people of Tibet have a cultural characteristic that all of us can learn from. As Buddhists, they respect all living beings. As people who find the natural world alive with spirituality, they feel kinship with their environment. Life systems are interlinked in a wheel of life. Drawing on this cultural tradition, a new type of administration has evolved in Tibet to protect the land. The Tibetan approach builds from the local people. They become the wardens, administering the land through local government structures. In this vision, community-based development goes hand in hand with nature conservation. In many and exciting ways, 
Tibet, with the highest mountains in the world and some of the most special ecology, is a leader in protecting the environment. In 1985, less than 1% of Tibet's area was protected. By the year 2000, 14 nature preserves protected 28% of the land. Now, with the creation of Four Great Rivers Preserve, 42% of Tibet's land has included conservation. Four Great Rivers Nature Preserve demonstrates how local people, officials, and experts are starting to act together to protect the environment and improve the livelihoods of people. Creating such a new life balance will not be easy, but the task shows promise of succeeding. What is important is that the local government and people have taken on this vision. They need international help from more than groups like International Fund for Animal Welfare and Future Generations. This is a global resource and a lesson of worldwide relevance.